Welcome to the conclusion of our look at solar panel optimizers and other common MLPEs. Last time, we briefly talked about rapid shutdown devices and microinverters before taking a closer look at the topic of optimizers. Today, we'll start off by going over some of the disadvantages you may encounter when using this type of MLPE before focusing on the topic of two-for-one optimizers. Are they a good fit for your solar design, or will the drawbacks outweigh the benefits? Stick around to find out. So, I mean, these sound like pretty great options to have incorporated into your system, but as with anything, there has to be some disadvantages. What's some disadvantages of including optimizers into your design? A big one that I can think of is, and it's not really, I say a big one, but it's really not that big, is you've got more wires to deal with. Of course. Yeah. And with oh. more wires, in essence, that means more wire clips. And if you're on a, a rail, that means you're bundling up more on the rail. Mm -hmm. Um, with direct attach, it means you're putting them up on the frame. So you're using more wire clips on the frame. Mm -hmm. On a metal roof, there's that language that says anything that's likely to be energized shall be grounded. The thought process is, is well, if you've got wires that are dangling, mm -hmm. and let's say a critter chews through one of those wires and that's, it can lay down on the roof or something yeah, like yeah. that, the question is, is that likely to happen? Most AHJs are going to assume, yeah, that is likely to happen. Therefore, that means more wire clips keeping it up in the frame mm -hmm. so that if a, a critter chews through a wire, it's not gonna be able to fall down on the, on the roof itself. No, they'll stay secure then still. It's just more to think about. More wires to clip up, more, you can't have anything sagging. Another thing I think long-term getting into just that you have more, more electronics spread around your system is long-term O&M, operations and maintenance. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, you're out there inspecting and checking things out, if things go wrong, you gotta, crawl into the, and of course it's always the middle panel of a, yeah. of a subarray, right? So you have to get out there and, and replace these or di diagnose these. Another one I was thinking about as we were talking about it, I mean, there's that learning curve of before you were just laying modules, who cared what module went where. Now you're making sure you know exactly what optimizer is on what module within that array. Yeah. And, and so there is that little bit of a learning curve to make sure that you have some kind of plan to it's gonna complicate things. It's gonna be unavoidable, it sounds like. Yeah. Right. So, okay, so this is, you know, the we're, we're talk about single module optimizers, mm -hmm. ones that are gonna be on every single module. If you're planning out your system, every single module is gonna be designed the same. But from some of the installs I've been on, I know I've heard a little bit of contention about another topic of optimizers, and that's the two-for-ones. Tell me a little bit about those. What was a two-for-one optimizer, and what are some of the challenges that arises when using that category of optimizers? I thought we weren't gonna talk about those. I, yeah. Sorry, I gotta bring up sore <laughs> subjects. <laughs> So uh, I'll, I'll explain what it is and then um, Dustin can go from there. But right. a two for one is basically um, for, every, for every optimizer that's there, there's actually four leads instead of just these two. So you're actually plugging in two modules. So the overall benefit is for 100 modules, you only have 50 of these guys. Sure. Um, so that's sort of the advantage, just lower cost. But it does create more challenges no matter if you're doing direct attach, rail based, it does create a challenge on the installation side and a lot of people really get frustrated with it. And that's because when you're sequencing a string of these, these are now strung together. One module will have a, uh, an optimizer, the other module won't. Um, so that has created a lot of angst in some of the installations we've seen. Sure. And we have ways that we've talked to people about overcoming them. But I don't know, Dustin, if you want to get more into the angst of a two for one. Yeah, I mean, my experience has always been with two-for-ones and almost every project, there might be one out there that everything went seamless. <laughs> um, but there's always issues on the job site, and it's whether the crew's getting confused or the layout's not working right. Yeah, if you're on a flat roof and you're able to get around um, each module sure. and there's gaps in between the modules and you're able to, you it know, it's a little, right, it's a little easier to contend with. But when you're on full coverage, and a steep slope roof, it's it's not good. And even if you're on a lower slope roof, but it's full coverage, it's you still have those problems. And even with rails too. Even with yeah, rails, rails, rails based attached. systems, you're putting them on a say you're mounting it on a rail. The module is over one, and then then the next module you have to reach over and, and plug it into that same optimizer. So it adds time. So everybody out there has to make that decision. You know, the cost savings with having to buy half of these, 
and knowing that there will be extra time in the installation is the balance. Yeah, in the projects that I've seen, I would almost guarantee you that the money that they saved on the optimizers, mm -hmm. they actually spent in the installation crew. Wash on that. Because <laughs> they weren't predicting, they were predicting the job to go up in such a way as what they're used to, or if they're not well experienced with duels, um, you've got somebody in purchasing that's like, oh, well, we can save X amount of money if we do it this yeah, way. Right. They're not familiar with the mounting system, the roof or anything like that. They go ahead and make that decision. The crew then finds out kind of last minute after the job's already won and then everybody's upset. Um, that has been my experience. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not as extreme as you are. <laughs> and I think you're right. I think if, if there's not a great planning and you jump on and, and people just aren't ready for it, it really becomes, uh, you know, very difficult. But I think, you know, it's still uh, a debatable topic, I think. Yeah, I, I, it definitely is. And, and um, what I've experienced is whether you're on a rail or you're on direct attach, I mean, if you're on the ground, you can get to the back of the modules, sure. yeah. you can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. But if you're on the roof, the guys are gonna be cussing the racking system. <laughs> and it's, it's a little frustrating for me coming from a racking system perspective because it's not my product that's affecting this install. Yeah. It's the dual that's affecting the install because you can install modules just as fast with a, um, a regular optimizer. Yeah, right. So, and also, it seems like on the topic of if they're mapping out their array and everything like that, it's going to be even more complicated mapping that stuff out then, too, because you've got gaps yes. in that all over the place then, too. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, if you, if you do choose to still mount these on the module, then literally every other module has one or doesn't have one. So when you're sequencing them, you have a string you're putting up and you're bringing them up on the roof. If you flip one, grab the wrong one and bring it up top, it actually you know, causes quite a kerfuffle. Right. Up on top of the roof because people realize that and then they have to get the other one and then they have to make sure that the sequence is right. So, you know, it, it, it does slow things down as well. But again, people who really do are, uh, you know, really spend that extra time to, to do that extra work of really preparing well and being systematic about it. it you know, it, it's, it's workable, but it's just a level of complexity that needs to be dealt with. You got to be mindful of it for sure. Absolutely. It's new for some people, but it can be fast. Yeah. But if you're, if you're not planning right and stuff, those gaps in your, in your overall idea, your overall map out of what you're doing, it can trip you up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and sort of traditionally, and, and I guess we're looking at this, we're jaded from, we're, we are really a direct attach is our, is our own product itself. Although, you know, S5 obviously supports rail-based systems and all other systems on metal roofs, anything you want to attach to a metal roof. But traditionally, every module is strung together to the next one, so it's very repeatable. You know, you, you grab that, that conductor, plug it into the next one, this one now, every other one, so you're skipping a module with, the, with this string. And so, you know, so it's, it just creates confusion uh, on the roof where, um, you know, especially if people haven't been doing it a lot. Very interesting. Love digging into this topic a lot. It's obviously something that's popped up a lot more and become more of a concern over the years. If you, the viewer, would like to see any more projects that utilize these optimizers, such as two for ones, then go ahead and jump into the video links in the description below to see a little bit more. And guys, thank you so much for joining us today and imparting your knowledge. There you have it folks, some of the things you want to keep in mind if you plan on utilizing optimizers in your solar design. As Mark and Dustin said, they can be handy to help get the most power out of your array. However, taking the time to plan out everything, from which type of optimizer is right for your project to how you'll manage your wires is a very important step you're not going to want to skip. Thanks very much for stopping by the Metal Roofing Academy. We've still got more solar trading opportunities coming up soon, so be sure to get subscribed and ring the bell to catch them as soon as they're released. Thanks so much to all of you for watching.